Estás viendo Canal América, Televisión Dominicana para el Mundo. A Time for True Show is sponsored by the office of Dr. Bernard Fiakoff, a periodontal, dental implant and laser specialist in New York City for over 40 years. Dr. Fiakoff was honored by the International College of Dentists and Pierre Fauchar and received the Presidential Lifetime Humanitarian Honor from the White House. Call us at 718-229-3838. Sometimes life can be so damn hard You don't know where to go Everything keeps falling apart Yeah You try to do your best But only God knows That you've given everything you've got But the world takes you down You just keep moving on at your feet. Welcome to a Time for True show. I'm your host, Dr. Bernard Fialkoff, and it's a pleasure to have you back with us again. And tonight, we're going to actually have a very interesting show because sometimes in life, it seems like there's so much going on and we feel like a, a leaf blowing in the wind and uh, sometimes maybe we get frustrated that we can't really accomplish what we'd like to and so tonight we have a very special gift for you because we're going to present a person he's a real person even though he does so many things is quite amazing as i'm joking uh because He has accomplished so much in his life. And so, Buddha, if you can, let's put him up on the screen and we'll introduce Mr. Paul Allen Billings to our viewers. Mr. Billings is an on-air radio personality, entrepreneur, promoter, mentor, philanthropist, and social justice advocate. He's the founder of the West Michigan Community Health Network of Imara Entertainment, BestBlackNews.com, and Umoha Radio App. Before his career in broadcasting and the media, he served in the Army and then as a corrections officer for 13 years. He was always inspired by his love of music and so he created a media platform that not only would inform but entertain and hence established the underground video show and smooth grooves in the early 90s. Underground video would become the largest black independent video show in the country during its duration and featured some of the most influential hip-hop and R&B artists. His passion for community service and media prompted him to start his 501c3, West Michigan Community Help Network. And basically, he helps people in need. His organization bridges the community together and offers a variety of programs for members of every age and background. And his goal is to help educate, inform, and empower the community about issues that affect their well-being using what's available and coordinating it. He's done numerous food drives, job and health fairs, outreach programs, festivals, concerts, student mentorship programs. Uh, you take it, he done it. Uh, Mr. Billings also is uh, the owner and has launched multiple radio stations and really there's so many that so much to really i don't know if we can we would spend the whole night on his stations but i'll mention a few of them wuvs 103.7 the the beats and um, you know that one reaches one million households 
in Michigan on the Comcast network with music videos and stimulating topics. And um, later he launched M106 FM, WHPV 98.5. And, uh, you know, he just go on and on and on because he actually has established a number now uh, over the last years uh, and creating multiple platforms and he avails opportunities to individuals and businesses across wherever he touches and across the country. He's the founder of bestblacknews.com and this I find very interesting, spotlighting positive news. That's really something so uh, refreshing, positive news stories. And he also founded Imara Entertainment, the record label for the youth, creating a problem for our youth to get our youth to do something and inspire them with art and something aside from the drugs that can endanger them. His Omaha radio app represents excellence in the black media and Omaha stands for unity and features 45 independently black owned community based radio stations. That's really quite amazing. He's traveled all across the world and was made village chief in Ghana, West Africa. And you know, I could go on and on and on because I was teasing with him before that uh, I think he's on a different clock and he must have gotten the amendment for 48 hours in a 24 hour day because really we would spend the whole show on his accomplishments. He's even made a safari company where people can visit Africa and enjoy the scenery, the wildlife. Really, he's really quite, quite, quite a human being and the engineer Buddha. If you put him on live on the screen, please. And I want to bid a warm welcome. To Mr. Paul Billings, how are you doing out there? Wow. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Fiaco. I am uh, truly humble. Uh, I get kind of tear jerky when people start to to read, you know, uh, uh, my bio because uh, behind every story, there is a uh, every accomplishment. There are trials and tribulations that you go through to get that. But my faith in the creator and the training and the, up, the upbringing of my mom and my stepfather that's been installed to me, I never gave up hope and never veered off track and never stopped believing. Uh, and so I get, get emotional because it is, uh, it is a true blessing to be a servant. It is a true blessing to be sitting where I'm sitting, uh, coming, from, coming from the mud and and God allowing me to do something that I love to do and and hopefully when it's all said and done we've been able to make a difference I feel great man well I can see why you feel great you, you're creating such positivity such production helping so many people you know I want to share the story of how I met Mr. Billings I was down at the World Conference of Mayors it's directed by a very good man Mayor Johnny Ford and uh, all these mayors get together with different aspects and, you know, corporations and different groups in the society. They're trying to improve our world. And I met Mr. Billings there. And to be honest with you, uh, he's such a humble guy that I had no idea that there was an encyclopedia about what he had accomplished. <laughs> 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 and I didn't know what I got into tonight, but uh, I, I really, we could go over a number of shows and have a show on every single thing he's done. So, but let's get to it because I know you can really inspire a lot of people. So let's start out with your early years as a young man. What were your dreams when you were a young guy? You know, uh, I, I know I wanted to be in the entertainment side, but I also wanted to be an air traffic controller. Uh, but, and, and, and there was, uh, I sung in a choir at church. I was I played in a band at school. I participated in, in a little bit of acting. 
but I think what really significantly changed my life, uh, and this was before deregulation with radio, in my neighborhood, there was a radio station. It, it, it was easy listening. And when I first discovered it, I went over there about six, seven blocks away from my house, riding my bike, and I looked inside, and I could see the DJ talking. I could see the tower behind, and it. And then I would go home and turn the radio on, and and listen to it. I was fascinated that that this person from this area in my neighborhood was communicating with so many people at one time, and it motivated me. Uh, fast forward. 35 years later, uh, that building was sold and that company moved out to the suburbs to, with deregulation, the, the easy listening station moved out to the suburb. But we own that exact same building right now that I grew up looking into as a kid. And it just gave me chills to know how God would order your steps and you don't know the direction you're going to go. I didn't, I had these dreams of doing things with music and being an air traffic controller or something with, with communication. But I had no idea that that God would take me down this path of ownership and being able to found uh, these entities. Well, you know, it's really amazing. And so let's start out with the next thing that happens. Then you actually joined the army. And how, how did that come to be? And how was that? How was that? In, in, in my bio, I think I, I, need, I was actually working for the Department of Correction when I joined the military. Uh, I joined, a, I was a correction officer from the age of 19, the age of 32. And at the age of 21, 22, I was, I found myself working in the prison system, but I didn't feel, honestly, I didn't feel complete. And so I took a military leave of absence and joined the military and the military kind of cleared my head up. It, it, it gave me a little purpose and uh, I was able to retain my job. Uh, uh, I was in a reserve, so I was only gone for like six months. Then you have weekend duties and all that. Uh, but it gave me a purpose, um, Doc. And I, I, I knew I wasn't going to be a correction officer forever then. Uh, I, I knew I had to work on an exit strategy because I wanted to do something that was fulfilling. But the military really gave me a sense of purpose, a sense of discipline. Uh, because everything was so structured and I didn't have discipline at that time. I was making money and partying, DJing in college, wasn't saving anything, just living, just living life like you're going, you know, like today's the last day, you know, and the military really changed me. Well, I tell you what, uh, I can definitely see, you know, from what you accomplished that it, it definitely did something because it's quite amazing. <laughs> How much, how much you've gotten done and how humble you are. And, you know, I've seen that in other, in other human beings who get a lot done. So then, and then, so you go from there and then you start getting into media. Was that something you already, like, were looking already when you were in the Army about the media? Well, you know, in high school, I, I was a writer. I DJed in high school. I, I did announcements in high school. Got to college, I was DJing. And uh, I competed in mixed shows in college in the Detroit area. Uh, but what happened, I moved back to my hometown. And I remember and when I was in college that there were TV shows. There were TV shows, video shows that came out in the 90s. Uh, and, and, and and I called somebody in the record industry that used to get me, get me my records that I DJ. And they supplied me with the records. I said, well, how can I get videos? I would like to do a video show. Well, they said, well, if you can get the airtime, we would get you the videos. And that opened up a whole nother world for me, uh, being on the television side, playing a video show. Uh, and you started off, Doc, you started off slow. They don't allow you to interview a, a lot of the big names at first because you have to prove yourself as being credible and a, a great quality production. Um, but I went on to interview people from Beyonce's, the LL Cool J's of the world, the Shaquille O'Neal's, the Alicia Keys, all the A stars that came through uh, Detroit, Chicago area, or even flew out to New York, then to Miami, they fly you out to Miami or to LA for the, the conferences. So um, that all came from just having these good relationships and somebody believing in me and say, hey, if you started over here, we got you, we get you the videos. But what happened, it became such a quality show that other TV stations needed that content and so i was send my show became syndicated 
uh, it was airing on a, uh, at that time, it was a satellite network. I uh, uh, can't think of the name right now, to Dallas, Texas, but it was a black uh, satellite network that reached hundreds of uh, TV stations. And so that's how I was able to penetrate a lot of households. Um, Beautiful. A lot of wow. cities. Yeah. And, and, the, and it was not just a regular video show. Um, the Million Man March kind of changed my life and gave me a direction uh, on, on, on mission driven and, and, and trying to be someone that's going to make a difference in your neighborhood. So the show became more of playing positive videos. If you're going to talk about selling drugs, then we're going to talk about the ramifications of selling drugs in that same narrative. And so the show became that type of show and we made ratings. We did good. We had advertisers and, uh, just got tired. Just got tired and became, you know, I'm a single parent and I got two girls I was raising. I, so I had to, I had to walk away from it, but it, it was a good learning experience. And I still have those, those relationships that are never last, never end. Beautiful. And then now that you're 501 C three, the West Michigan community help network. What kind of goals and projects you have in mind and have been ongoing with, with your, with your group? Uh, we started off doing, uh, the mobile food drives, uh, the food giveaways. Actually, we won the first of nonprofits in uh, Muskegon, Michigan to do food giveaways it's been probably about, about 30 years ago. Uh, now they're very popular. Uh, but we, we used to have the food brought in from 30 miles away, uh, from, uh, the harvest gleaners. And so we started doing that, but then that became popular. Other nonprofits started doing it, and, and we have an annual job fair that we do, the Thurgood Marshall Job Fair. Uh, we got one coming up in, in April. It's the largest job fair in the community, over 500 jobs. We typically try to have enough companies that's going to deliver 500 jobs, good-paying jobs and careers. Uh, we have a mentorship program, and that Amara Entertainment is, uh, is part of uh, the mentorship program in which kids who are in our mentorship program, they want to get into arts, want to get into music. We have a recording studio and they can record music. We put the music out for them for free. They keep all the money. They own the copyrights, they own their publishing. And we teach them all about ownership and content. It's, it's really not to counteract um, the gang violence, the, the YouTube videos that, that every city have where you have these rap battles going on and they, they rapping at each other and, and it starts and it really starts um, a lot of violence. And so we got in the mix in our city and said, no, we're not going to let that happen here. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna have a positive side to this. And so with Amara Entertainment, the, the kids that we have elevated, they've been on TV, they've, they've done interviews, they've been on billboards, they've been on commercials, they sung in high schools and we elevated them to the next level of uh, this is what real music is about. Amazing. Well, you know, you have a whole studio for them. You have you give them ownership so that they feel like they're creating their own thing. I mean, that's like out of heaven somewhere. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, no, really, yeah. I'm just looking at that because you're taking someone who could get into violence who could get into drugs and now instead they take all that energy and passion and they explode into the sky with their hip hop or their, you know, their singing or their entertainment. And it's, it's unbelievable. That was, that idea just came out of the air or how, how did you, it's an unbelievable idea. I have to give credit to a program and uh, I travel around a lot in Milwaukee, the Running Rebels program. Uh, with Mr. Victor Burnett. I met him um, a, a while ago while doing an interview of an artist. They actually started a program in Milwaukee and it's been very successful with pulling uh, gang members off the street. And, uh, and so I met him interviewing some of those artists that was on a label in Wisconsin. And I just, and I like the idea and, and I just, you know, every community should have that type of program because uh, we just don't let them get and go straight to the studio. They have to go through classes, life skills, training. They have to go through a, a, a lot of reprogramming um, because they coming in with the mindset that we want to be like these gangster rappers we see on, on YouTube. No, it's not going to be that kind of content. You know, you're going to rap about that. I want to know, are you doing that lifestyle? Are you really living that lifestyle? Most of the time they're not. 
So we got to rap about what is real, what is your reality. And, and that's the paintbrush we need to paint is a true picture of what's going on in your life. And wow. so we, ch we have to change that narrative. And so the music become more real and realistic rather than what the mainstream pushes. Well, I got to tell you, one thing I wanted to, before I lose a train of thought, I would love for you to arrange for that person in Milwaukee. I would love to have a show for him on this, you know, in our segment. And then what we can do is let's see how we can get that program into the New York area. Because you know what? New York's been having a lot of violence. And this would be something that would really be positive. And it seems to me like an unbelievable program. It makes a lot of sense to me. Is that You think that's possible? I'm sure. I'm sure. And, and Victor's program in Milwaukee is not just music. Now it's entrepreneurship. <clears throat> they have a, a restaurant. They have a garden. They have, got, they have the ex-game members going to the farmer's market selling produce. Um, man, one of the... Uh, one of the form, one of the players for the uh, Golden State Warriors, the center. I can't think his name right now, but he came to that program, played for the Golden State Warriors. Drawing, I'm getting old, uh, but it's been a very, <laughs> been a very successful program, and I'm sure uh, he wouldn't mind talking about it and even helping, you know, structuring um, this kind of program. Uh, they bought sure. a whole block when they started off. They had a small building, but now they have a whole block in, in basketball teams. They they they're doing it all. And it's just a massive program um, and that I have nothing but respect. It's probably the best program I've seen uh, throughout America that is in in ground zero, making an impact. On oh, these kids. absolutely. And you know what? We could bring, because I know you know this from the World Conference of Mayors, we can bring the Duck Free World notepads in there and get them to the kids who really are needy so they could have right. that also as part of his program. You know, we can... Yeah, obviously, I see you do a lot of things. We can we can even maybe put that on your show, on your radio show, so we get that out to all exactly. the different cities. And, uh, you know, absolutely, let's do that. Uh, you yes. know, I was going to ask you something. Uh, I'm surprised you're still alive. I'll tell you why. <laughs> you, 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 you've taken up so many radio stations that I would think to some guys after you, because maybe they wanted to have one of the stations... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not, you know, we're community based, so it's a lot of work with radio. Radio is not, it's not easy. And thank God we, we have, we have a team, you know, of people that, that keep this thing rolling. And yeah, there are people that want to be on radio. We, we definitely have a, uh, most of the requests we get is for people wanting radio shows, wanting music played, uh, want, wanting interviews. And, and that kind of comes with the territory, but, uh, we, we have helped people get radio stations too um and i've helped folks in, in grand rapids michigan uh kansas city uh, missouri st louis missouri i consult with people in mississippi and uh, other areas and try to try to sustainability show them how to sustain these stations because you you can get them up and going but you also need to stay afloat sure well that you know that definitely that's the key you got to pay yeah. your bills you got to have a staff yeah. that you can pay. Absolutely. Uh, without a doubt. Um, well, uh, you know, I joked about that because, I mean, how many radio stations do you run? So, in, in reality, I run three. We consult with a, a, a fourth station. And we, well, not consult, we program a fourth station. Uh, and then I consult with a, quite a few stations. But we, we, we only own three, but we have the television show you mentioned that runs on Comcast cable throughout every household in the state of Michigan that has, that has a subscription to Comcast cable. And so, uh, that alone is a, is, those are big responsibilities. And oh. we have 50 stations on our Emoja radio app and these stations are independently owned and they have different formats from talk radio to Caribbean music, to blues, to gospel, to, to hip hop. It was our version of iHeart. Beautiful. Well, yeah. That's amazing. Congratulations. Uh, you know, that's, that's really so well done. Um, so then, yeah, <laughs> it's so amazing. And then you go on and you establish something called bestblacknews.com and you spotlight something very unique in today's world, positive news. Yeah. 
We we do our best, uh, uh, particularly on our Instagram page. We have a, a great Instagram following, and 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 on the website we post those stories. Uh, not enough good news is shared. Um, there's a story recently that that we went viral that we shared of a group of black men in Detroit uh, called New Era Detroit. They're taking back their community. They're like the new Black Panthers, but they're with a peaceful content. They are out policing the area because of the violence that's gotten out of hand in Detroit. Uh, they've been successful, you know, protecting uh, the, the women who are out at nighttime, kids who are out at nighttime, and trying trying to help find people who have who had violated our women and our kids in the Detroit neighborhood. And we share stories like that because those stories don't get out that there are people who are fed up with the violence. There are black men who are fed up with the violence and who are trying to take back their neighborhoods. And so uh, we share stories like that of kids who are academical. I shared a story earlier today, a nine-year-old kid in the East Coast uh, graduated from high school, like nine-year-old, graduated from high school uh, from a, a charter academy, I think, in Pennsylvania. So those stories need to be out there. And unfortunately, we do have to share the, the negative stories too, but it's going to be more positive stories compared to negative stories. It's a lot of good uh, people in America. What's beautiful? You know what? On the topic that you're on, you should check out, or you may know him, uh, Reven, Re Brother Reven Williams, and I'm uh, sorry, Reven Fellows, Dr. Reven Fellows. And he's okay. got a program in Chicago that does what you were talking about in Chicago. He calls it uh, Books Over Balls. And uh, he does exactly what you were saying. You guys should maybe figure out how he could be promoted through what you do already. It's called Books Over Balls, uh, Reverend Fellows. And uh, he goes out and basically same concept to get the violence out of the neighborhood by getting to the youth, getting them into some different avenue and changing their lives so that uh, it doesn't happen. So, uh, you know, I think that your, you know, your program is, is so important because I, I go always going on and on with my friends about that is that, you know, we get back what we put out. So if we put out some positive news, we're going to start getting some more positivity. Right, right. Yeah. It matters. It makes a difference. And, and good would always override bad. You know, it always going to override bad. It's always going to win over bad. Love is going to win over hate. And so uh, we just need to can share it, share it. There are so many good stories out there. Some of these people are just quiet. Only want their story shared. You know what I mean? But there are people every day who, who, are, who are beating the odds. And, and doing great things in America. We just need to share those stories. And, and like what you're doing, I didn't reach out for an interview. You you reached out to me and said, we want to we wanna carry your story. That is a positive narrative. And hopefully someone will, will, will be inspired and, 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 and want to continue to do good in their, in, in, on a journey or don't give up on a journey. And, 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 and their story becomes a, a positive story. Uh, but it's so many stories out there. Your story is a positive story. I interviewed you. You know, you're, you guys uh, have an amazing operation there, what you're doing. So uh, it, we so it get so caught up in clickbaits, man. They, they, they throw these negative stories out there and they clickbait you and the algorithms go up. Uh, people respond to negative stories more than good. Well, because that's all you show them. You know, that's all the, the, the Internet is, 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 uh, is allowing is these bad stories. Positive well, story change. I, I, yeah. You, you know what? I am so happy that I sat down with you down there at that World Conference of Mayors. And, you know, I had no clue when <laughs> I sat with you. And now I do. So, you know, you're going to get some calls from me. And uh, I would definitely check out, you know, Brother Fellows in Chicago. He's a great guy. And um, absolutely. And then, you know, what I'm going to say is... Uh, you brought up a quote to end the show on. Unfortunately, we're to the end of the show. Uh, but, you know, uh, I always used to watch him when I was a kid. And he was a great leader. And Martin Luther King uh, said, you know, you can't, you know, you can't drive out the negativity with the darkness. You have to bring in the light. And, uh, you know, and only love can eliminate the hate. And, you know, um, he had such a positive message for mankind and you know uh i want to thank you for being on the show amazing stuff you're doing continue thank you thank you if you don't mind i gotta shout out my safari company in tanzania visit tanzania for less 
Uh, it's in, it's in, that's in deep East Africa. It's beautiful, natural. Serengeti and go to Zanzibar. Um, and uh, we, we have tour guides that will take care of you there. And, and please, if you want to donate to our kids' free trip to Africa, uh, we take kids to Africa every year for free. We've taken four kids uh, in June to Ghana, West Africa for free. They have round trip, they visa, they passport, they shots, they hotel, they food, they everything are taken care of. These are high school kids who are doing good in school, uh, part of our mentorship programs. And uh, you, we have a Facebook page, Kids Free Trip to Africa, on our Facebook page. Like the page and follow our journey. Well, you know what? You, you provide so many things. It's, it's really inspiring. Thank you for being on the show. It's an honor, Doc. I appreciate you so much, man. God bless you. Yes. Hey, you know what? Let's work together. And for those of you out there, let's take his example, Mr. Billings here. And you know what? He set up the bar pretty high. So we're going to have to do some pole vaulting now. But let's get started. And let's move this life forward. Positive news. See you on the next episode of A Time for True Show. Have a good night. God bless. This show was sponsored by A Time for Truth Foundation Incorporated as a community service. Sometimes life can be so damn hard. You don't know where to go. Everything is falling apart. Try to do your best, but only God knows that you've given everything you've got, but the world takes you down. You just keep moving on at your feet.